The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. We're going to take a look at this uh, FTSE this morning. You can see here that we're making a little bit of an ABCD pattern. Uh, quite interesting. I don't trade the FTSE, but it's interesting to watch it in relation to the pound. But if we take a look at the DAX, you'll see that it is even clearer. It's got a beautiful pattern. Let's get it up here. You see this morning we came down and we completed a beautiful ABCD. That was from the high that we made back on uh, April the 4th. I rallied back to a 61% retracement on the 9th. Came down here in one day and we've had a pretty good rally. Now what's interesting now, folks, is if you look at this DAX chart very closely, you'll notice that that BC swing that led to the D point down there at 11,850, we're making the same type of a rally now. And that makes it a 1-3-5 pattern, which is a bearish pattern, not a bullish pattern. So let's uh, remember that because uh, if the prices are going down, it's a downtrend. And if prices are going up, it's an uptrend. The key to, to learning what the trend is is you have to find out what the time frame is that you're looking at. Because, you know, a five-minute trend is different than an hourly trend. Hourly trend is different than the daily. The daily different than the weekly. So if you've got lower tops, and lower bottoms, you have a downtrend. If you have higher bottoms and higher tops, you have an uptrend. That's basically the definition of what an uptrend is. You have to know what time frame you're talking about. It has nothing to do with the 200-day moving average or crossing of the 400-day moving average. It determines whether you've got higher bottoms or not. That's from the words of Harold McKinley Gartley from 1937. So just remember that. I think it's something to always keep a, a really clear, clear head about. Now, we've had one market that we've been following closely overseas that is very important uh, from my perspective because it's the Hong Kong market and we have many, uh, oh my gosh, it's snowing there, Peter, already in the middle of April. Shut the front door and raise the rent. Oh my goodness. We've got a wind chill factor here in Tucson of about 78 today. We actually hit a high yesterday of 92, but we're cooling off about uh, 18 degrees today. It's supposed to have some rain coming in a few days. Let's take a look here at this Hang Seng Index, folks. Going over the last 18 months, you'll notice that 61% retracement that we just made, that came in at 30,100 and change. We hit that yesterday. Uh, we're now trading a little bit lower than that right now. That's very important, folks, because if you remember the chart on the weekly crude oil, that's the exact same pattern that we had on the uh, on the crude oil. I mean, it's, I don't know if they have anything to do with each other, but that's pretty much, uh, you know, what we're watching here. So sort of pay attention to that. I don't know uh, what it's going to mean, but it's a, it's a very, very interesting one, you know, to, uh, to watch. I don't think I have it uh, ready to – no, I don't have it for that uh, on the long-term – uh, the long-term chart showing that high that we made $77 a barrel, but that's neither here nor there. So we'll uh, – okay, um, Mr. Z is asking if in the banking index – let's take a quick look at it, Mr. Z. I always like that banking index. If you'll notice here, uh, we had this little rally. In fact, I pointed this out uh, in the newsletter the weekend. We had this nice little 10-day rally. You see stopping right at the 61% retracement. We came off of that pretty good, so that tells us that that's a, a pretty substantial uh, a rally. After 10 days, you made a 61% retracement, and now we're starting to move down. So if it gets above that high that we made on Monday, then that would tell us that we're going to go higher. But right now, it's in a downtrend, and it still, it still looks lower. So uh, these bank stocks, folks, do not look good. Uh, you know, if they ever go below those, those long-term numbers that we talked about, uh, I don't think they can. Well, they could, of course, but uh, you know that was a big number that we had out there on December the 26th when everything, you know, lined up. This is an important correction 
that we're having here in the stock market from uh, my perspective and I guess from everybody's perspective because there's still a possibility that this could have uh, just been another rally back high. We don't know that. We're going to find out if we have a really strong day either up or down, that would give us some indication. But right now, we're just having a, a short term. You know, Pat, that's what I that's what I base this short on uh, Sunday night was the fact that all of those patterns that we were looking at, you know, were lining up. Uh, here, you can see they haven't gone anywhere. Look, Just look at, the, here's the E-mini S&P. Look at this. Here's your three drive to a top pattern there at 28.98. The high was, uh, I believe, 20. 901 or 29 uh, within a point of that and the only thing we've done now is we backed off to 2882 we backed off of 15 handles that's nothing you know that's nothing you got to get it below 2850 to even say that this is correction you know so that's all we're you know just have to hey when you when you put a trade on you don't know what's going to happen you don't nobody knows that you don't know if you're going to make any money on it you don't know how much money you're going to make that goes back to those four fears we always talk about. They're silly because most of them are on things you can't control, and you can't control it. The only thing you can control when you put something on is how much you risk. And then you just pray to the trading gods that you get more right than wrong and uh, you know see how the chips fall. But that's all you can do. I, I'm a technician, folks. <laughs> I, don't, uh, I don't look at this stuff uh, internally. I got an email this morning from somebody who's really smart, Telling me about the uh, how the Russians and the Chinese are controlling the gold market and getting ready to run up. Well, if they're controlling it, they're doing a very bad job, in my opinion, because gold has not really gone anywhere. But that's neither here nor there. So we'll see. We'll keep an eye on some of these other markets for you. But the dollar index is still uh, the, the main focus, from my opinion. <coughs> Excuse me. And with, along with the euro, the euro got up to that 112. Uh, 90 on a fast tick this morning, and now it's back down again. Uh, I still think that dollar index has got legs to get to the upside because that head and shoulders pattern has certainly <coughs> been broken, uh, broken out to the upside. Uh, the euro hasn't broken down. It, need, gets, it needs to break below a 111.65. If it does that, and if it does that, then you're going to start to see a market that will probably start moving to the downside but until I'll put this chart up so you can folks take a look at it uh, get below that the thing is that uh, once we made that low the other day uh, last uh, Wednesday at 111.85 the only thing we were able to do was rally 100 pips that was a 38 percent retracement to the penny that came in at 112.85 I think we had 112.87 this morning on that report and that was if that's a five day rally in the euro folks <laughs> that is not very good i mean that is just a very very negative situation in the euro and that'll probably affect a whole lot of things um uh, is what i'm looking at so we'll have to uh we'll have to wait and see we got a break coming up here and then i want to chat a little bit about the old favorite commodity of arthur cutton back in the 1930s anybody can tell me what it is Wins a prize, Arthur Cutton, 1938. Tried to corner the market, didn't do very well. We'll be right back, folks. 877-927-6648, I believe. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, I posted the chart of the weekly crude oil. I wanted to show you the pattern that is there. You'll notice that little yellow three drive pattern that we had that comes in exactly at the 61% retracement at 77 bucks. Uh, it's actually drawn wrong here from the high. Uh, you'll notice the low on the bottom down there on the 16th is not set correctly. That's because I did it wrong this morning, but it does come in exactly at 77. And now we're setting, as you can see, at this 61% retracement at uh, 64.35. So uh, we want to look to find a place to uh, to go short crude oil. I've tried it once and gave him my 40 pips. I'm going to try it again pretty soon, but we'll have to wait and see uh, what's going to happen here uh, in the next uh, few hours, and then I'll, I'll look at it again. A lot of things are happening uh, on an astrological basis here on the 10th. I uh, look at the number of aspects that are happening. I I don't understand all of them. I know that this is just going to be a pretty exciting day when you go back to mark your charts uh, in the next few days. That would be my that would be my guess. Now let's just switch over here for a minute and talk uh, about the uh, the wheat market because uh, right, we're we're at a real critical level here in the wheat. Let's get this up here so you folks can take a look at it. This is uh, yes, I'm going to talk about that, Bob, about the. Uh, uh, about the fact that the corn uh, had really bad numbers and it rallied strongly. That was going to be my next thing, but I, I wanted to show the wheat because it's actually, in the, since uh, March the 11th, it's actually been acting better than any of the other grains. Uh, and we also are coming down now to a near 78% retracement. But look at, the, uh, look at the sine waves on the bottom, folks. They've been pretty good. Uh, three of the last five have been spot on, and we've got one today. So uh, with all those astral things that are happening, you might want to take a look at the wheat. If you look at it closely, you notice that we made the high on that new moon of April the 5th. That was when it matched the high from the 25th of March. And now we're uh, in this area where just a lot of things happening today on the uh, 10th of, uh, of, April, of April. So we'll watch it very, very close. Now, tomorrow's a big astrological day because it's Rich Anderson's birthday. But we've already wished him a happy birthday, so we don't have to worry. But watch this wheat. Uh, it's got a... We're in an area where you want to be looking, and we're down. Uh, we're actually down four days. We're equaling. We're equaling almost the rally that uh, sell-off that we had between the 26th and the 29th. That three-day uh, correction now between the 4th and the uh, 10th. 
So uh, the, the, very interesting. I don't know if it's going to work or not, but it's very interesting how it lines up with repetition, and those are you know some of the things that uh, that we're that we're talking about here when we're looking at some of these things. Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, who knows about it? I tell you, this stuff with the uh, uh, with the uh, election stuff I, it, it drives me crazy. I want to bring up this uh, chart here of the gold because we've had a nice rally here, and uh, this is the daily. We did get up to that 1312 or 1311 and change. That was a 61% retracement of the C leg. I still think we're heading down to this level here of around 12. Uh, 64. Whether we're going to get there or not, I'm not sure, but it looks like it still has a chance. That's going to be a real interesting spot, folks, because that will be the first major A, B, C, D correction since the bottom came in at 11.68. And we know that 11.68 was important because that was the 78% retracement of the low that we made back from 2016. So we want to watch this one really closely here should we get the gold down to that 1264 level. I know that there's a lot of information coming to you on the internet that you get a fundamental stuff about how the Chinese and the Russians are accumulating gold. Well, they might be, but I'll tell you, uh, you know, uh, I, I just follow the chart. So, you know, it just looks like a, the first ABCD pattern down there at that 1264 would be uh, a real interesting spot. Uh, to get long between 1264 and 1258 uh, if we get there. Um, uh, I, well, I don't know if we're going to get there or not, but that's what uh, what's happened. If we do get above 1328, then we're going to go a whole lot higher because that's got a really chance to do it, uh, you know, from the upside. Now, remember, we talked about the, uh, the, uh, the platinum the other day because platinum uh, went up and made that, uh, in fact, it got to, it went about $3 higher on Sunday night when it completed the three drive pattern, but we've uh, went up to, we got as high as I believe 1920 an ounce, and we're now down below 19. We're trading around uh, 895. Folks, watch platinum at 888, because if platinum can only back off to 888, uh, it's trading around 895 right now. That'll be very, very important. It's one of those times that it's got to hold that exact number, and when you're trading something that is trading at you know 19 or 900 dollars, and you're going to buy it at 888, and you only have to risk like 200 bucks on it. Uh, that's an ideal situation because you know uh, you don't know if that 888 is going to hold, but boy, it's got a lot of numbers uh, holding it up. So whether that's going to be the case or not, I don't know. But uh, platinum has a chance to be very very bullish if it if it doesn't give all this stuff up that it's made. And if it gives it start to give it back up, then that's a lot different. It was just, you know, topping a lot later than we had in the gold market. But, you know, this is these are things that we have to look at on a day to day basis because we don't know what's going to happen. The, the, the frustrating one for me is the silver. If you remember, we were looking for the buy to come in on silver uh, last Thursday or Friday, which, in fact, we, we got that come in. But uh, we've only been as high as, I believe, 1530 or something. We, did, we really could, couldn't even make a. Uh, you know, much of a dent at all. We couldn't even make the rally that we made between the 4th and the 18th yet. So it's still early, but uh, that's what it's looking like. But whether it's going to happen or not, I don't know. But you know, the best part of this, folks, is nobody else does either. Now, last night we had something interesting happen when uh, the crude oil went up and made a 61% uh, retracement last night. We were watching the, uh, the AI program, and it had a pretty good top in there. The market only backed off about 30 or 40 pips, really not very much. But we are watching for a potential top in this crude oil because if it can hold, uh, it's not getting much above that 64.80, which has been the high so far, it still has a chance because the, uh, as I pointed out on that uh, weekly crude oil chart, that's making 61% retracement. And Vladimir Putin said yesterday he was quite pleased with the price of oil. Well, good for good old Vladimir. I guess he's doing okay with his long position. But anyway, that's what we're keeping an eye on. So pay attention to it. Whether it's going to work or not, I'm not sure. But you know what? Nobody else does either. I did want to bring to your attention one that was very important that we talked about yesterday. It's had a little bit of a sell-off yesterday, and that was the FTSE. We did get up there to that uh, uh, ABCD pattern pretty much spot on. Then we had the sell-off. Now it's bouncing back a little bit. 
still a little early. We don't know what's going to happen, but uh, like I always say, nobody else does either. So pay a, a little bit of attention to it. I think it's relative uh, important. One of the things we haven't talked here for a very long time, we'll talk about it when we get back from the break. It's related to the stock market and uh, we'll talk about it, but it's called the VIX index for volatility. Let's get this up here and take a look at it. Uh, we're trading it around uh, 12 and change. So we'll watch it uh, a little closer here to see what's going on here. We're gonna got break time coming up, I believe. And then we'll be back. No guests today. You've got me for the whole hour. If you want to help out, and if you want to help out, ask a question. Call in 877-927-6648. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Okay, folks, I posted the chart of the VIX index. You can see it's making a small three drive to a bottom pattern here. Uh, the interesting part is that it's trading at around, you know, 12, almost 13. And, uh, you know, back in the old days when the market was only around uh, oh, 24,000 in the Dow, it was trading at around nine. So people are taking some uh, protection as they look at some of these things uh, going through. Now, I wanted to bring to your attention 
the uh, chart of the gold market. Uh, let's try it, Larry. It's the uh, same color, but a little different. This is the corn market. Folks, we had a very, very negative report in corn yesterday on the crop side. Uh, Rich Anderson was even surprised about it, but look at the price action. You'll notice the double bottom that we had there at 385. Uh, it hit, went down and touched that same bottom and then immediately rallied seven cents. Uh, that, that's hard to believe that it was able to do that. That's a possibility that there might be a situation here in corn where we're very, very oversold and we might get some more of a rally. Uh, so just keep in mind that these markets react differently all the time, but uh, that was very, very surprising to a whole lot of people that the fact that the corn could uh, rally uh, given the fact that the report was so very bearish. But this thing is very, very oversold. You know what you're looking at right now, if you look at it really closely, going back to last July, down there at 384, go to September, 384, you know, go to uh, March, it was uh, 386, it was uh, late March, uh, 384, yesterday, 384, there's a lot of support in corn at 384 in the new corn. And this hasn't even been planted yet, and it probably will be a while because it's so darn wet and cold and some of that stuff. I don't know, Bob, if the action was short covering or not. I looked at the open interest, and I didn't see any indication of that, but I will double-check that again but to see if it was short covering. I'm sure some of it was, but, uh, you know, there also might have been some new buying coming in. I don't know. Corn's a very great, a great uh, trading vehicle for new traders, folks. Uh, it trades very well technically. Really hard to get in trouble unless it's uh, due to a crop report or a weather pattern, and usually you don't want to get involved in those unless you're a professional. But it's really good to trade because the margin is very small. Uh, you can't hurt yourself usually, and uh, it does. It, it's a huge market. It's our largest crop here in the United States, and you know so many people are you know involved in it. So it's uh, it's it's really a, a really great thing to trade. I mean, I think the euro is by far the best thing to trade. But uh, by golly, you know, it, uh, it's not for the faint of heart sometimes. So we'll see here. Uh, Mr. Z is asking me if I'm bearish uh, gold short term. Define short term, Mr. Z. If you mean the next day or two, yes, I am still bearish. Yeah, we gotta, if we get above 1313, 13, I have to say, hmm, might be wrong here. But I shorted at 1311, and uh, I think that it's still got a chance to, to go a little bit lower. But uh, you know, we'll have to uh, we'll have to wait and see. Um, and I'm basically, you know, you I'm just basing it on the charts too. I don't know anything about the reports or any of the things like that. So if you bear with me here one second, folks, I have to check something because an alert is going off, and I wanted to be sure that I'm very very close to some of these things to uh, see what we're doing here. Let's just move this over just a little bit here. Oh, boy, I miss it. By, oh, well, we'll just have to wait and see. Okay, uh, Treasury bonds. Uh, we're up around uh, 148.08. We held that level that we talked about. Uh, it made a 3.8, uh, excuse me, a 61% retracement at the uh, 147.16 uh, level. Uh, and then we've rallied now of almost three quarters of a point. That tells us that we're probably getting close to a uh, pretty good move. Uh, and if we get up a much above that 149.12, that's the area where I really like to be looking to sell the Treasury bonds because I think, uh, you know, our little rally is running out of steam here, and I'd like to be able to see it uh, get to an area uh, which is tradable around that 149.12 level. I think would be interesting to take a look at, but we'll have to. Uh, Wait and see. It's just a little bit, little too early yet to uh, do too much uh, about that. Okay. One of the questions that someone's asked me is if I had, if they had to just pick two rules of all the rules that I talk about, and you know, I, I, you know, I have about ten of them, I guess. But if they asked me to do two rules, uh, the two rules that you probably should do is, is one is never, never, never add to a losing position. That's uh, and when you hear people that are averaging down, you know, just uh, that that's a that's a suicide thing. Any any of the books that you read about it, you know, it's just just not any good at all. And the second one is is uh, you know, know yourself. I mean, you really have to understand what's going on inside your head because this business, folks, is 85% mental. It really is. And if you're really tired, or if you're taking medication. And some of that medication might come in a bottle. You know, you got to be very, very careful because that clouds your thinking. 
and you want to be as fresh and as possibly as bright as you can be, especially on days when you're trading, and that's the that's the main thing. One other question that came up that I have an answer for, but you probably uh, you probably don't want to hear it, but there is a signal that I've learned over the years that is 100%, and I got it from Larry Williams, and it doesn't really have too much to do with what we have now. It's called the the telephone, uh, indi oh no, the calculator, he called it the calculator indicator. When you're in a position and you go to calculate how much money you're making, bingo, your, your greed index just hit tilt. So if you go back and look, but every time you reach for the calculator to find out how much money you're making, before you finish turning that calculator off, go to the telephone or go to the computer and get out of that position because that is it. That's your greed indicator, you know, hitting the uh, tilt button, and you certainly want to get out of that. I mean, that's really a that, – that, that's the one that saved me, you know, back in uh, 1976 when I was long all that corn and oil and stuff soybean oil, and uh, I was, you know, I was hearing all the stuff from uh, the Reuters that the only soybeans available would be in the Smithsonian Institute, and, you know, I mean, you hear that stuff, and, you know, I, I said, uh-oh, this is, you know, you have to be careful. But anyway, that's really the, uh, the main thing to uh, look at. It. Anyway, those are just some of the things that we were talking about uh, here this morning. Now, if you wanted to call in today and ask any questions, we don't have any guests. I was hoping to have Stan Harley, but Stan was busy today. I'm going to do my best to have him on tomorrow. Uh, but the number here is 877-927-6648. I don't know what corn is doing this morning, but I imagine it's probably still in that little tight trading range that we've been watching for, for some time. So uh, keep a uh, keep a close eye out on that to, uh, to watch it because uh, – yeah, with bearish news and the market going up, that is a that's a big big uh, green sign, folks. Because that uh, that's it. Buy them when you're crying and sell them when you're yelling, David. That's absolutely correct. <laughs> Those they have uh, they have uh, badges on the floor at that time. The Jack Carl, the big hog trader, their little bad said is basically said the same thing. Buy them when they're crying and sell them when they're yelling. And that's uh, that's the truth. And one of the things. Uh, uh, hold on one second. Oh, uh, yeah, that's true, Jose. They do show everything now on what your positions are, and that actually is a bad thing. Uh, I, I prefer, I don't even look at that. Uh, don't look at how much money you're making, folks. That's a, that's a sign that uh, the greed index is starting to, well, you can look if you're losing, but don't look if you're winning, because uh, take care of your losses. The profits will take care of themselves. Trust me on that one. Hey, we got a break. Thank you for the break, 877-927-6648. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the Gold Report currently
currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, next on TFNN. Okay, we're back, folks, and uh, we had a caller that was asking about Big Steel, and I wanted to uh, show you the chart on this. We're at a very important spot here on Big Steel right now. It's $17 a share. That's U.S. Steel, folks. It's U.S. Steel, and that's, uh, you know, what we're, what we're watching here. So that's pretty much what we're paying attention. Folks, if you're listening, and you uh, please don't Skype message me if you're listening, because uh, it, it takes my train of thought completely out of off the ballpark. So uh, try not to uh, to send a Skype message to me. I know a lot of you I know personally, uh, but I, I uh, prefer to take care of that a little, little bit later. All right, let's take a look here at U.S. Steel on a, uh, on a longer time frame. It means a lot to me because if you look way back there in 2000 when it was trading at around uh, 11 bucks a share, my, uh, my grandson was born on August the 14th of uh, the year 2000, and I started, I was buy I started buying gold for him uh, in the, that same year, I would buy one or two uh, ounces for him every every so often. But I did buy U.S. Steel, and uh, that turned out to be a uh, a really big move. Uh, we got out of it long before the top, but uh, he was able to put a few shekels in his uh, in his bank account and to go to college. And yet he's uh, yeah, he's doing pretty well. He's a smart little boy. Anyway, uh, where we are with the U.S. Steel now, we're setting right at a retracement level. Uh, it's very oversold market. We've been down uh, since early 2018, so uh, I think it's got a chance here if it's going to hold. We're not going to run out of steel, uh, but we're going to use a lot of it. So, uh, Victor, are you on the line now? Yeah, I was just wondering, is it is it at the same price it was before he got elected, the president got elected? You remember he was going to have the big uh, uh, you know, no, infrastructure no, no. deal? No, no. Uh, steel, steel was trading at around 12 bucks a share when the when the election happened in November of uh, 2016. Right. So it's still substantially above that. Could this be another Bethlehem Steel? Oh boy, those are questions I can't answer for two reasons. One, I don't trade stocks, and I don't even remember what happened to Bethlehem Steel. I think did it went under, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah, this company's yeah. laden with debt. It's like that other yeah. stock. Agency. Yeah. No, I, I don't. I just look at the chart, and if you're going to buy, What's buy it here. here. Well, it, it, we're a major down a support. Lot of volume, no? I don't look at the volume either. I'm just telling you, this got a lot of support at 17 bucks a share. You know, we're right at a 78 per 61 percent retracement of the move from 2016. So, right, course, if, it, if what do you normally do after a 61 percent retracement in your career? It goes up or down, or like, where does it go next? Well, it's a you know you you got a better than two thirds chance that it's going to rally from there. But again, it's a two thirds chance you could lose, and that's why you want to risk uh, on a seventeen dollar stock. The most you want to risk is about a dollar at the very most, and that's a you know that's eight percent. So, you know, I, I, if it gets below seventeen, I would be I would be out of that stock. I, I wouldn't uh, yeah. I wouldn't want anything to do with it. It is a weird Wally Wednesday. You have to be Delta neutral, right? 
Yeah, that gets into the options. And if you learn to do options, you'll make a lot of money because you're selling yeah, right? something. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, it's absolutely where you, correct. Where do you think Apple's going? Is it going to retrace or keep on going up? It did like a 0.91 expansion. I, I just don't get that stuff. Well, Apple yeah, is a marketing company, and it's it's rallied up to a little above the 61% retracement. But I still think that, uh, you know, Apple could make a new high, but it could turn from here and absolutely go lower. So I, I don't know what it's doing from here. I really yeah, don't know. I, 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 it came out with bad earnings, and why wouldn't Apple come out with anything different? There, it was a bad company six months ago. You know, Warren Buffett said to buy it in August when it was 213. I'm sure he was dumping it then when he was on uh, TV. <laughs> Now, whatever he says, do the opposite because he's he's a, he's a he's a manipulator of the markets. He knows how to use the press. There's no question about yep. that. I, I he certainly does. All right. All right. Have a good well, day. listen. Th thank you for calling in, Victor. Appreciate it. All right. Okay, folks. Uh, let's take a look here at Apple just for the fun of it, since we uh, we've been watching it. Let's. Uh, I I think we got up to 200 bucks, if I'm not mistaken, and the high was. Uh, Let's see what this is. Give me one second here, and I'll have the old Apple up. There we go. We'll put, post it into the room here and see how close we got to that. Uh, oh, we, we went a little above the 61% retracement. Let's just get it up here so the folks can take a look at it. And uh, we did make it. Uh, that came in at around uh, 61, came in right where it's trading right now, 199 and change. We hit as high as uh, 202.85 yesterday. So... That might be a very important thing to uh, to pay attention to. We've got the bonds moving up. Now we've taken out those highs of the last few days, and that's one of the things that we want to be uh, watching uh, you know, very, very closely. Hey, we've got something that's going to be real interesting here. We just heard from our good friend uh, Shane, and we, he's going to uh, share with us one of the things that he's looking at. Give me one second here. This is his uh, planetary index. It's worked relatively well. And just give me a second, and we'll get up here to take a look at it. And it looks like uh, it matches up with uh, what Bill Meridian saying, that there's a positive bias in some of these things. And it looks like we're going to go up into about uh, April the 17th is what it looks like. So this, I really like this, uh, this planetary index that he's done, folks. He does a super job. You can see the low that it made back on March the 7th, spot on, the high that came in on the 20th. That's when we had the full moon, and look where we are now, and we're going to have another full moon coming out here on the 17th of, uh, no, when that's later on, that comes in at the, yeah, the 19th of uh, April, we have the uh, the full moon again. So it's going to be interesting. Shane, thanks a lot for sending that in. I We really miss you. I hope you can come on someday and chat with us because uh, you've always brought us some great stuff. But uh, this uh, this planetary index is really interesting. You did a super job on that. And uh, we certainly uh, appreciate everybody's giving you accolades here in the in the den. I know you can't hear that sound of one hand clapping, but believe me, it's there. So <laughs> let's keep an eye on it. Okay, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Um, the uh, we got uh, someone's asked a question about Uber, folks. I I don't really do anything in stocks. You know, you should ask uh, you should ask Basil and Steve Rhodes and stuff because I really don't doing that. You know, we'll seeing uh, you know ba basically what we're watching. So. Well, hopefully we'll have Shane on as a guest because he's uh, he's such a really nice guy. He's got such beautiful children. And uh, Shane, I'm really proud of you, buddy. I always knew when you came out to visit me many years ago how successful you were going to be. But you even you even stretched my imagination. So keep up the good work, my friend, and stay humble. Stay humble and carry a big stick, as they say. All right. Let's talk a little bit about the Uber. Uh, I don't know anything about the stocks. All I know, if you're looking at these things, look at the patterns. You know, you'll see Lyft. Lyft has hit uh, these uh, these numbers that we look at. Watch the ABCD. I believe the ABCD structure in Lyft is going to take it to about 62. Those of you that follow ABCD, you know, that's what you want to be watching. Let's just pull it up here uh, just for a second because I, I watched it just to see how it handles the uh, – I haven't looked at it since the day that it uh, came out, but let's look at it together here to see if I'm, uh, we'll put a hourly chart up because it's been several days and uh, we should be, no, here it is. You'll be able to see the uh, the ABCD structure that I'm talking about here. Hold on just a minute. We'll get it right here. Let me, let me put the ratios in so we can see it together. Okay, I went a little above the, 
Yeah, there we go, and we'll get this. And if you want, if you want to really understand this, go back and look what happened to um, to Facebook. I mean, Facebook came out to 52. It was a buy on an ABCD at 26. You know, I'm going to post the the lift for you, and we'll take a chat about it when we're, we come right back. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, we're back, folks, and uh, keep an eye on this this uh, Treasury bond market, folks, because uh, we've got up to uh, 148.12 so far, 148.14. We're looking for a target to go short somewhere above 149. That won't be till tomorrow uh, or maybe even later. We don't know, but we'll have to wait and see. I think we've made a major top in that uh, bonds at 150.20. That was a 61% retracement. And so uh, pay close attention to it. Uh, regarding the, um, one sec, regarding the uh, market for the crude oil, uh, we still haven't uh, triggered a short, uh, short in that, but we're getting very, very close. And we're not sure when it's going to happen, but we're watching it closely. We'll let you know by the videos that we send out uh, each day. Now, tomorrow, with any luck at all, I'm going to have Stan Harley as a guest. I'm, I couldn't get him today, so I hope we'll have him on for tomorrow. And uh, that'll be something to, that we want to pay attention to. We've got a lot of cycles happening today, folks. Those of you that have your ephemeris at home, there's just a whole lot of things that are occurring, especially we have a Venus uh, conjunct 
uh, you know, uh, your, uh, Venus conjunct Neptune, which is related to oil. That's one of the things that we're watching. Uh, we also have a uh, sun squared uh, Saturn, which is one for soybeans. We're looking for a pretty good move in soybeans. So, uh, and also the wheat. We're watching all of those are related to that uh, move. So we're keeping a really close eye on them as we look through. So uh, the stocks, we've sold off quite a bit. There's a big 233-week, 144-week uh, cycles that come due at that time. That's one of the reasons why we want to have Stan Harley on. Uh, that happened on Friday, and whether that's going to be anything or not, I don't know. But we did sell off a few hundred points in the Dow, which, uh, you know, when you're going straight up, a few hundred points is uh, is quite a bit. If you're in that trade, uh, you know, put your stop at break even and stop looking at it because it may or may not work. We don't know. So keep a close eye. 877-927-6648. 